Tony, you played for obviously big clubs in England, like yep. West Ham, Everton, uh, and Leicester. Um, what was it like transitioning between those sides? Were your transfers? Was it different pressures at different clubs? And what was the dressing room like in each? Um, yeah, it was tough. I mean, so, so when I left West Ham, I left West Ham in 1988. And uh, just to give you a bit of background, so like Gazza had left Newcastle and gone to Tottenham for two million pounds, which, I, I, you know, when I say now, all the young kids, oh, you must have been shit then. You was only two, <laughs> you was only two million quid. You must have been rubbish. No, it was 36 years ago. It was <laughs> yeah, a lot yeah. of, it was a record signing. And West Ham allowed for me to leave West, uh, to leave the club for two million and 50,000 pounds. And the 50,000 pounds made me a British record signing. And I, I hated it. I, I, I didn't, I didn't want to be a British record signing. Um, firstly, I didn't think I, I was good enough to warrant that tag. In, I mean, you can argue. I mean, I think he's well, we've well, got Casado now. He's probably, I think he's the record transfer at the moment for Chelsea, yeah. isn't he? Yeah. And, and no yeah. way you would call him worth 115 million or that worthy of that title. And that the way he, football's going with the money, and that might be forever now, you know. But um, me personally, I didn't, I, I didn't, I knew on my day I was a good goal scorer, on my, on my day top, top goal scorer, but I was never a world class player. I was never, I never the best player in Britain, even. So I didn't like, I'll oh, Tony Cotty the the two million pound player and all that rubbish. I didn't like all that. So it was a lot of pressure on me. Um, it was really hard for me to leave West Ham. I was born in West Ham, West Ham fan, still a West Ham fan. And, and you know, it, everything was West Ham, West Ham. And the problem was, and I was talking about the other day, I mentioned already the 86 team, we finished third. Mm -hmm. If we'd have won the league, I know it's ifs and buts, if we'd have won the league, then I wouldn't have left West Ham. Why? Because one of... There was two reasons I was unhappy at West Ham. I wasn't getting enough money because I'd come through the academy. That doesn't, again, that doesn't happen nowadays. Um, and the other thing was I wanted to win trophies and medals. And if we'd have won the league in 86, I probably would have, well, I, I definitely would have stayed. I would have stayed at West Ham. Well, I, I wouldn't have had a, the reason to leave. And then, you know, West Ham wouldn't have got relegated the year after I left, which is what happened. So, of course, I got blamed for not only did I leave the club, they get relegated. And oh, it's your fault you left and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> Um, yeah. But to answer your question, to go to Everton was tough. It was really, really hard. Um, I, I think we're all guilty of it a little bit. You live in your, your little cocoon in Essex or Wales or wherever it might be. And, you know, you just think, oh, no, I don't want to live there. Oh, it's miles away and all that. And, and, and you know, the easiest thing, I, I, I had a choice of Everton or Arsenal. And the easiest thing in the world would be oh. to go to Arsenal. Arsenal would have been, but then you wouldn't have got Ian Wright. So you got you should be thankful. Okay. If I'd have signed for Arsenal, you wouldn't have got Ian Wright. But, um, I mean, Arsenal, London Club, extra 10 minutes in my car training to get to the training ground. It would have been a no, it was, it's a no brainer because I could stay at home where I was. Um, to go to Everton, it was 250 mile away. I didn't know a lot about Liverpool. Obviously I'd played Liverpool and Everton I played up there, but I didn't know much about the city really, apart from the Beatles coming from there, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And it was just, it was like a real, um, real sort of massive difference in my life to move up there and, um, the people were very similar because the sort the, the Cockneys and or the Essex people, if you like, you know, sort of very working class, you know, duck and dive a little bit, you know, have a laugh and a joke, and that family community spirit and everything. I just transported from one area that had that to another area in yeah, in, yeah. in Liverpool, and I, I would add as well in Leicester as well, very similar, same same, all three of my clubs, big clubs, obviously, uh, the main clubs. All very, very similar, but it was hard. And I got up there and the, get in the dressing room, and I think the players were looking at me, thinking, you know, he cost record transfer. We, I went, what can he do? What can he show us? Um, I fell over in training in the first day. Like the ball, no one near me, and I just sort of tripped and got my jelly legs. They'd all been training for ten days, and I was in first day worth of training, trying to do what they was doing. I just fell over. I remember Kevin Ratcliffe shouting out, how much did we pay for you? <laughs> I think, no, oh, take God, it on me. <laughs> <laughs> so there was big pressure on me. But was Everton like, off the back of a league win or was it around yeah, that Yeah, Everton time? won the league in 87 and yeah, Lineker okay. had left in 86. He'd scored the 40 goals so they hadn't really replaced Gary Lineker. So right. my, mm -hmm. my job was to, and the manager actually said to me, Colin, I said, look, I want you to sign, score 25 goals a season, which sounds easy, but <laughs> it's not easy, obviously. Um, but I've already mentioned my debut. I mean, the pressure on me for the debut was incredible. But, you know, yeah. to get the hat trick, it sort of settled me down a little bit. But in a way, it was the best thing I did and the worst thing I did because everyone's thinking, oh, he's going to get hat trick every week. Be like early in Ireland and get yeah. 50 goals in the first season. And all that. It just never happened. Um, but, the, you know, the dressing room was different. You know, you've got a lot lot more players from up north as opposed to, obviously, yeah. the, the Cockney London boys down here. So you took a little while to get used to the dressing room. Um, I think it's fair to say that we 
um, the younger players, because I was a younger player, I think it was difficult in the dressing room because I think there was a little bit of resentment from the older ones. The older ones had won the trophies. And then, of course, what happens is you read the newspaper and the, the newspapers were very powerful in those days. And the lads would have read in the paper, oh, Tony Cott is getting X amount of pounds a week. And it was always normally, it was either between two and three times more than what I was actually getting. Because right, yeah. obviously they like to exaggerate. <laughs> but as a player, if you, and you, you've been, I'm not being funny, if you're someone like Graham Sharp, for example, wonderful player forever, and, and you know won the league and everything, and he'd be reading, he'd probably think, well, I'm on whatever he's on, and Tony's getting three times more. I wasn't, but that's what. Yeah. So you, you're going to get a little bit of resentment. The younger players come in, Stuart McCall, Neil McDonald, Pat Nevy, uh, Martin Keown, Peter Beagree. You know, we signed some good players. And Everton at the time, I think you can sum it up. We had some very, very good individually talented players. We just didn't have a good team. And a lot of that was, I think there was just that sort of, just didn't gel. There wasn't a, wasn't a, a together dressing room without a doubt. And I think because of that, we suffered. And, you know, our league form obviously showed that the manager got sacked then Howard Kendall come in so there was a lot it was a real transitional period I, I always say Everton for me was the right club but at the wrong time right, but yeah. you can't always pick and choose when you sign for someone and if you like that clip you can catch the full episode here and you can subscribe to the channel here